In a modernish era, everybody likes to collect bottles. We've got the ink wells. Straightforward ink well. You pour the ink in it and you get ink decanters. That's an ink decanter. That's what would have been on Nelson's ship. Nelson wanted a little bit more ink in his ink well. They would pour it in there. When he stopped using it, he put a cork on the top of that and a cork on the top of that. And not all of them were done that particularly. Some of them were very flashy. Now this is copper and on this copper here there would have been beautiful design on the copper itself and as you can see how that stands and I don't have a feather to show you unfortunately but with your little feather quill you dip in the ink there and you do it but you only add enough ink to do the writing but it's a design that's got to be poured back in the bottle if it's on a ship. If it's on land that's how it would be but this was brought from underwater so one's assuming somebody either threw it into the sea or it was on a boat and when they were finished with it, they discarded it in the sea, much the same as they did with the ink decanters. It's like milk bottles today and beer bottles, they on a bottle, throw it over the side. Why? Because there's hundreds of them. Well, here we are, sort of several hundred years later, and there's not a lot of them. But beer bottles were made very, very similar. Cast out, round top, cork on the top, you got beer out of that, and then as time went by, you got a little bit more modern, and they got glass bottles for beer, and doing the same thing, mold the top on it, top onto it and you drink your beer, and then you've got other things carrying different things. This particular one here didn't carry beer. You can't quite make it out, but if you're getting close, it says Shilling Bright on that. Well, Shilling Bright was a company in England, in London. Glass bottle, made of two sides, formed, top pasted onto it. What this kept inside of it was blacking. Shilling Bright was blacking for polishing your shoes. As silly as it sounds, Dickings as a boy worked in that factory. So this was made in the time of Dickings and even probably before Dickings and after Dickings. And you've got other little interesting things that were thrown into the sea as well. You've got, formed in 1866, was uh, the marmalade, the Dundee marmalade, grand mould that metal. So it's quite old, not as old as the Roman stuff, but the marmalade jar was finished with now, when it was finished with, it was cast over the side and thrown into the sea. Then you get different ones, cinnamon here, and cinnamon that was actually used there, used medicinally as well cinnamon was, with its little teeny droppers because it would be concentrated for dripping it out. Straightforward medicine bottles would have the medicine like Mortimer or whatever it is you've got inside there, but it would be sealed and the glass would be sealed at the top, you can see how it's broken. And what would happen is the doctors would come along, break it off, and pour out the medicine that it were, and then give it out to their clients as it were. This is a medicine bottle, and if you'll notice, there's flush sides to it. So this medicine bottle went on board a ship with a doctor, and it went into a little slot like that so it didn't rattle about. But obviously he would have a stockpile down below hidden away with other medicines. And when this bottle was empty and finished with, he's finished it. It's gone over the side and waited for someone like myself to actually come along and pick it up. Another medicine bottle made exactly the same. And they come in different colours. Now the colours and bottles back in those days very, very important nowadays. We don't seem to bother about colour or anything, but we'll come across to this side and we'll finish with the colour side of it first. We we'll come up to this bottle here, and if I shake it, it's still got stuff in. Cork was intact, some of it's evaporated over time that I've added, I've waxed it on the top. But that is concentrated brandy, and that particular concentrated brandy is equivalent to 42 gallons. So when you're shipping brandy and you want to take it out all the way to uh, Australia, your concentrated brandy is going all over there and you can use it in the concentrations for whatever they use it for. It is in a blue bottle to denote that it's poisonous. It's pointless. Everybody couldn't read. And if they couldn't read it's poisonous on it, they'd kill themselves. So they coloured the bottles and anything that came in a blue bottle was poisonous. 
nowadays is a famous water uh, that they actually sell in restaurants that, that comes in a blue bottle, which throws me a little bit because I know about old bottles and blue bottles being poisonous. Nowadays we know precious little about it. One of the most common bottles that they used to be about were these clay bottles here. And as you'll see here, Henry Bart, AB, Gibraltar, was a brewery here in Gibraltar. They made gin and they put their gin in these bottles and then they corked it on the top. And the sailors bought the gin and they got the gin, you know, get it down your throat and all the usual. But when they finished with it, it got thrown over the side of the vessel and sank to the seabed. There's another example of a, a gin bottle over on this side here. There's another example of a gin bottle. Made by a totally different company altogether, Bells. And that's another one, but all the same size. All finishing up in the same place on the seabed. And over the what, 46, 52 years that I've been diving, there used to be literally thousands of these in the north of Gibraltar in the bay on the seabed. Divers used to go down there and there wasn't a time back then in the, in the 60s, 70s when a diver went down and didn't come back with a gin bottle. Why? That was an anchorage over there. So when the fleets came in, they anchored there. And the same on the end of the South Mole with a place called Seven Sisters. They fleet anchored in a half moon there. All around that area it was scattered with hundreds, literally hundreds, thousands of those. So divers went down, they picked them up. All the military divers that have been through here, the local divers, the people that have been diving, all over the time that I've been diving for 50 odd years, everybody taking them. Now, they're very, very, very rare. It's like the usual thing when you start picking up little pieces of history, whether you're digging them up with one of those, what I call spinning roof racks looking at the ground, or whether you're diving going across there. Whatever little piece you take off the seabed is a little piece less and it slowly, slowly disappears. What you get left with is you get left with a beer bottle from Algeciras. Straightforward Algeciras boat, they bought the beer over there, they shipped it over here, they sold it to me, I drank my beer like I drank my lager, I throw it off the side, it goes blip, blip, blip to the bottom. In a hundred years time, two hundred years time, we'll be pulling out lager bottles, little tiny lager bottles like that, and maybe diamonds and say, oh look what I found, it's fantastic because we might not be using glass then might be using something totally different altogether. Then you can go back to the 19th century, 1800s there, and you can go for the Belfast waters. And here they are, the Corey's Belfast water. All that was put in that is the water bottle, not blue, because it's not poisonous. And it's like the Perrier water of the day. Little cork on it, like that, and the only reason it's shaped like that is so that when you put the bottle down, like that, it wets the cork and doesn't go dry. But the same thing that's happened with these is you've got it, they've drank it, they've thrown it out. All different mates that were doing it. This is the double soda mineral water to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. And it was a Camberwell, so this was, you know, Prince of Wales drank this, so it's got to be good water. Water, what can I say? They drank it, it was the same as the other. Shaped exactly the same so it would lie down and wet the cork. But once again, once we've used the Perrier, throw it away. Like when I have a gin and tonic, the tonic water over the side. Well, it doesn't actually, because I don't do that, but people do, I'm afraid to say. And here's what they look like when you first pick them up off the seabed. Another one there, here's the concretion down through ages and ages. These are animals actually living on there. They don't look like animals, the concretion, but they are. And it's very caked up on the inside as well, and very, very slowly, it will very slowly, slowly break off. If you want it to break off, you can tap it very gently and finish it with clean bottles like that. There's lots of people that collect bottles, and then there's the famous bottles that you'll find all over Britain in the old rubbish dumps there. Everybody loves them. There's the old marble one, the marble's still in it. It's filled up with sand, it's got a little bit of pressure in there and I can't push the marble down. I have no intentions of pushing the marble down, but it had a little tiny clipper on the top there that when you pulled it off with a little spring loaded like the old Corona bottles when we had a dandelion and burdock and everything back in the 50s, 
uh, and the 60s, you popped it off then, it was on the, the metal tanks and everything had rotted away. Marble's still inside, yet again. Whatever the fizzy water was, you'd done it and you'd thrown it away. Back then, you weren't returning the glass. Uh, back in the, in the 50s and the 60s, you started returning the glass and they were using it. There was a lot of throwaway bottled glass. Yet another medicine bottle. You can see the medicine in this one. This fitted into a little thing and you can see how they broke the top of the scary with a, with a, actually they score it with a scalpel and then they snap it off the arm, little bits of glass going in there. It's quite fascinating how it's done now. And in fact, if you go to some of these herbal, you sell you little glass tubes like that, where you have these herbal medicines and you just snap the neck off and it snaps off very, very clean. Here, they scored it, snap them off. Medicine bottles, just a collection of the type of bottles that used to be in and around the sea.